this is part eight of the market structures uh, series uh, in the IB economics, microeconomics, high level only component. So this is part eight of the market structure series. And this will be part two of oligopoly. So in the previous video in, in this series, which is oligopoly part one, I talked about collusive oligopoly. So I covered that in the previous video in this series. Uh, just to refresh your memory, collusion in oligopoly refers to an agreement between firms to limit competition, increase monopoly power, and increase profits. This video will focus specifically on non-collusive oligopoly. Now, non-collusive oligopoly happens when firms in an oligopoly do not collude. So they do not come together and cooperate, either openly or formally, or even tacitly or informally. When making pricing decisions in non-collusive oligopoly, firms have to be very aware of the reactions of other firms. Therefore, they have to develop strategies to predict all possible actions and reactions of their rivals or competitors. And that's why strategic behavior becomes very important in non-collusive oligopoly. Again, game theory becomes even more important in non-collusive oligopoly because all firms face that same prisoner's dilemma. This illustrates the strategic interdependence between those oligopolies and the options they face in terms of pricing and output decisions. Just to quickly refresh your memory, firm A has the option of keeping its price or lowering its price. Firm B faces the same options, keeping its price or lowering its price. If both firms lower their prices, their profit would be $4 million each. If both firms keep their prices, their profit would be six million each. Now, if one lowers its price while the other keeps its price, the one that lowers its price will make eight million in profit, while the other one will make two million. So there's a dilemma here because um, the best case scenario for each firm is to lower its price while the other keeps its price. But you can't guarantee that the other firm will keep its price. So it, again, this is where game theory becomes um, very important to explain their pricing and output decisions. Now, um, because of this prisoner's dilemma, in, in a non-collusive oligopoly, there is likely to be a lot of price rigidity. Prices are very rigid. They don't really change much. Because if a firm raises its price, it's unlikely that its competitors will follow. And therefore, it will lose a lot of demand to its rivals. Therefore, if you raise the price, demand becomes very elastic when raising prices because the percentage fall in quantity demanded will always be much greater than the percentage rise in price. At the same time, if a firm lowers its price, it is very likely that competitors will follow and maybe even try to undercut the, this firm's price to regain any lost sales. So demand becomes very inelastic when lowering prices because the percentage rise in quantity demanded will always be less than the percentage fall in price. This results in a very kinked demand curve. Okay? Let's assume that point A is the firm's current pricing and output combination, and it's also the profit-maximizing combination. So the firm's currently at point A, where it's producing Q star and charging P star. Okay? This is the intersection of marginal revenue and marginal cost. Now, because... The average revenue or the demand curve is kinked. Remember, above point A, demand is very elastic. Remember, demand is very elastic when raising prices. Below point A, demand is very inelastic. So it's kind of kinked. This results in a marginal revenue curve that is slightly broken. So marginal revenue is always twice the slope of average revenue. Okay, so for the range of output up to point A, the marginal revenue curve will look like this. Okay, and then after point A, suddenly there's a break in the marginal revenue curve. The kinked demand curve results in this uh, vertical sort of break in the marginal revenue curve. And this means that anywhere along this vertical part of the marginal revenue curve, if the marginal cost changes, the firm can still maximize its profit and still charge P star and produce the same quantity. So say, for example, uh, costs rise from MC1 to MC2, you'll see that the profit maximizing quantity is still Q star and the profit maximizing price is still P star. So 
This explains why there might be, the kinked demand curve explains why there might be a lot of price rigidity in oligopolistic markets. So what are the implications or the consequences of this kinked demand, for, uh, demand curve? Therefore, firms are afraid to raise prices and lose sales, afraid to lower prices and set off a price war, and they're also able to keep the same price and still maximize profits even if marginal cost rises because of the kinked demand curve. This results in a lot of price rigidities in oligopolistic markets, and suddenly this makes non-price competition more important in oligopolistic markets because firms do not want to set off a price war. They tend not to compete in terms of price. So what are some types of non-price competition that we observe in oligopolistic markets? Types of non-price competition. Well, um, one of them is the use of brand names, and that's why we can recognize a lot of brands. Maybe in the in the in the, in the shoes, uh, sports shoes market, we have Nike and Adidas, for example. These are both oligopolies. The use of packaging, uh, fancy packaging, or saying that your packaging is environmentally friendly. This is another type of non-price competition. Adding special features to your product, like when smartphone companies put a special camera or put a camera that is a very high in terms of resolution, the use of advertising to attract customers, the use of sales promotion, uh, buy one, get one free, and so on. Personal selling, trying to uh, get your customers personally through uh, calling them, you know, tele-sales and so on. The use of publicity, okay, getting uh, celebrities to advertise your product, uh, the use of sponsorship deals, sponsoring sports events or uh, major events that would make your company uh, seem more appealing and attractive, the use of special distribution features like free delivery or after-sales service. These are all examples of non-price competition uh, that oligopolies engage in to um, avoid competing on price and set off a price war. Um, and this is why oligopoly is often characterized by very large advertising and marketing budgets or marketing expenditures because the firms try to develop brand loyalty. Remember, the more loyal customers are to your brand, the more inelastic their demand is. And this makes the demand for their products less elastic or more inelastic. Um, some may argue that, that these large advertising and marketing expenditures represent a misuse or a waste of scarce resources. But others would say that it could also be argued that competition among the large companies results in a greater choice for consumers. So there are obviously advantages and disadvantages to, those, um, to this non-price competition and these large advertising and marketing expenditures and budgets.